Hey, this is Mike Filipov, a slightly sick guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. Today we're going to talk about alternate picking versus economy picking and why, in my unhumble opinion, you should not be using either technique exclusively if your goal is to build maximum guitar speed in minimum time. And then I'm going to show you how to speed up your progress with your picking technique and in your speed using the ninth wonder of the world that few people know and understand, which is directional picking. So first of all, what the heck is directional picking? Well, here's what it's not. Directional picking is not economy picking. Economy and directional are not two different terms for the same technique. Directional picking is also not using sweep picking on every string change. That is what economy picking is. That's not what directional picking is though. Directional picking means when you're picking on the same string, you're using alternate picking. And when you change strings, you move in the direction of the next string. Now I know what you're thinking. How the heck is directional not the same thing as economy? Didn't you just say that with economy picking, you're sweep picking on every string change and with directional picking you're moving the pick in the direction of the next string holy f you did just say, yeah, that. You say that aren't these two things exactly the same no they're not the same at all because for one thing you can move in the direction of the next string without sweep picking through the string change and if you only restrict yourself to sweep picking through every single string change which economy picking forces you to do then many guitar licks become impossible to play take for example two note per string pentatonic scales or four note per string chromatic runs you you will not be able to sweep pick through those string changes. You may be able to do it on the first pair of strings if you change the picking a little bit, but then on the next pair of strings you have to revert back to standard alternate picking. That is why I say strict economy picking is pretty stupid because it needlessly restricts the licks you can and cannot play. Now alternate picking, where every downstroke must be followed by an upstroke no matter what came before or what's going to come after, doesn't restrict what licks you can and cannot play. That part is good, but it is simply way less efficient than economy picking. Here's a simple way to illustrate the inefficiency of alternate picking versus economy picking with two shapes of the G major scale. I'm going to first play through them using alternate picking, then economy picking, and then I'll explain the difference. I gotta tell you, that took me five or six takes to get right because I kept messing up my alternate picking motion having to jump over the string I just played. Not good. Let me try it again using economy picking. Ah, uh, much better. So as you can see, my pick is moving quite a lot when I'm changing strings using alternate picking compared to economy picking. Not efficient at all. And any extra inefficiency in your picking hand increases the chance of something going wrong. It increases the chance that your hands will get out of sync, that you will hit the wrong string, that there will be string noise, or something else will go wrong that causes you to make mistakes, or at the very least, play slower than you otherwise could. So it seems like we got two opposing camps here. On one hand, we got people who say, screw logic, screw common sense, I'm gonna stick to alternate picking because Steve Morse does it, Paul Gilbert does it, John Petrucci does it, Aldi Miola does it, and if those guys do it, they can play as well as they do, hey, it's good enough for me. On the other hand, we got people who say, hmm, economy picking, it does make sense, it's pretty efficient, pretty logical, but damn it, I want to be able to play pentatonic licks and four note per string licks too, so what do I do? Enter directional picking. Remember how earlier I said directional picking means you're using alternate picking on a single string, and when you change strings, you move in the direction of the next string? string, this principle or this philosophy is what allows you to play licks that aren't playable with strict economy picking. Let's take a pentatonic scale. On one hand, I just played it with strict alternate picking. I played a downstroke followed by an upstroke and continued the same way all through the scale. But I also followed the principle of alternate picking, where I did alternate picking on the same string and I changed strings by moving in the direction of where the next string was. And I continued this for the rest of the scale. I would play a downstroke and an upstroke on the next string, and then I would move in the direction of where the next string was. This is directional picking. And in this case, directional picking happens to be exactly the same as strict alternate picking. But let's go back to our earlier example of two major scale shapes, which unlike the pentatonic scale has three notes per string. Here's how that one breaks down. I'm going to use strict alternate picking on the first string, or rather on the sixth string, down, up, down, 
And then I'm going to move in the direction of the next string using the principle of directional picking. So I'm going to pick the next string with a downstroke. But what do you know? That also happens to be a sweep picking motion exactly the same as economy picking. Huh. Let's check this out. And on the way back down the scale, meaning down in pitch, lower in pitch, I did exactly the same thing. I used alternate picking on the same string and moved in the direction of the next string, which also happened to be a sweep pick, which allowed me to do economy picking. And this is why I said that both strict economy picking and strict alternate picking in their pure sense are pretty stupid and nobody should be using each one strictly. Directional picking gives you the best of both worlds. It allows you to take advantage of pure efficiency of economy picking whenever that is possible, but it also allows you to play any other lick you can imagine with zero pre-planning and zero thinking using strict alternate picking whenever economy picking is not possible. Now, I want to talk about something that drives me absolutely freaking crazy. And that is when I hear guitarists say, oh, I get it. So I should just practice both. I should just learn alternate picking separately and economy picking separately. And I'll get the best of both worlds, right? How about new? Whenever I hear somebody say that they're going to practice both, that tells me they have no idea what directional picking is because they don't even realize that the statement they just made makes absolutely no sense. Like, what does it even mean to practice both? Does that mean you're going to take the same lick and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're going to play it with only alternate picking and on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you're going to do it with economy picking and then take Sundays off? Or are you going to do every odd repetition of the lick with alternate picking and every even repetition with economy picking? And both also implies that there are two different things to be practiced. There are not. Directional picking is one technique. That's the beauty of directional picking, that you don't have to think about multiple things. You think about one thing, which is going to the next note in the most direct, most logical, most efficient way possible under the circumstances. If directional picking was really about learning two things instead of one thing, we would all be better off just sticking to strict alternate picking because as inefficient as it is, at least it's only one thing to worry about. Now let's talk about the most common objections to directional picking, and I've covered some of them before in my earlier videos on this channel, but I'm going to give you a new way to look at them here in this video. So even if you've heard me talk about this before, this is going to be new for you. And the first one that I often hear is that alternate picking gives you stronger articulation or accents than directional or economy picking does. Because on downbeats, you're doing a downstroke and that's like the stronger, most powerful pick stroke, so you get more pick attack, more articulation. And that does make sense, I guess, if you never play triplets where every other downbeat is an upstroke, or if you never play quintuplets, or if you never play anything that requires you to accent a note with an upstroke. But if you want to do anything else, if you want to be musically free to accent notes on a downstroke or an upstroke anytime you want, anywhere in the beat, then that argument falls apart completely. But let's bury this accent myth into the ground even deeper, shall we? Check this out. I'm going to play a note with a downstroke pretty loud. Now I'm going to play the same note with an upstroke, but louder. If I can do it, and if you can do it, that means the alternate picking for accents thing makes no sense whatsoever. If you're having a hard time accenting notes on upstrokes or on upbeats, then that's not the fault of directional picking or economy picking. Your articulation simply needs to get better. And when it does, you'll be able to play anything you want, accent any note you want, anytime you want, anywhere in the beat. And you won't have to mask weak articulation by only having to use downstrokes in every downbeat. I think that is better. The other interesting argument that I hear about alternate picking versus economy or directional is that alternate picking is supposed to be better for timing because the hand is just going up and down, up and down like a metronome or the hand of a clock. This again only makes sense if you're doing eighth note strums where the hand goes up and down or if you're doing sixteenth note patterns where the beat is divided either in two or in four. But if you're doing anything with triplets or five notes per beat or anything that requires you to break away from the steady down and up motion, then this doesn't help you at all. Playing in time and playing tight in general is a lot more about what's going on up here, how you're able to feel the beat and how you're able to feel your playing lining up with the beat than it is about what your hand is doing. And if the motion of the hand really makes that much of a difference for how well you can play in time, then why do most, if not all, of the heaviest thrash metal riffs played with downstrokes instead of alternate picking? Should we all now switch to downstrokes for all our lead playing too because that's supposed to be better for timing? I don't think so. If you can play in time well, you can play well in time with any technique. And if you can't play in time well, 
you're gonna have a hard time playing in time no matter what technique you use. Here's another interesting question I sometimes get from guitar players who want to learn directional picking, like for example when I teach it to them inside my rapid fire guitar practice training program, and they ask me, Mike, if I've been playing guitar for 20 or 30 or 40 years, and I've already been doing alternate picking this whole time, does it even make sense for me to switch to something new now? Does it make sense for me to learn directional picking? And if it does, how long is it gonna take me to make the switch? I have yet to see a single case when it was better for somebody not to switch to directional picking, and I've also yet to see a case when somebody could not make the change, when they honestly committed themselves and did all the things I taught them to do about how to make this transition. I mean, yes, if your name is John Petrucci and you're in the middle of a Dream Theater tour, it probably doesn't make sense to revamp your whole technique when you have to play technically demanding and fast songs night after night. But if you have two or three or four weeks of uninterrupted time to make some fundamental improvement in your technique, then it's virtually impossible for this to be a bad thing. Here's a little story about this. In my first three years of playing, I went from directional to alternate picking, and then back to directional. In the span of three years, I went back and forth twice. Here's how it happened. In my first year of playing, I did not have a teacher, and so I instinctively taught myself how to pick, and directional picking just came naturally to me. It made all the sense in the world that this is how you pick. This is how you move the pick in the most logical way. Then after about a year of playing, I walked into my first ever guitar lesson, and I remember playing this Paul Gilbert lick for my teacher. And when I finished playing, the first words out of his mouth were, you're not picking it correctly. That's because Paul Gilbert uses alternate picking and I was using directional picking. And not knowing any better, I foolishly took the wrong advice and I switched to alternate picking for about the next year and a half. And I continued playing this way, hitting one speed plateau after another, not really getting all that much faster or cleaner, until I eventually found my next great guitar teacher, whose name is Tom Hess, who made me see the light about directional picking yet again. And that is when I switched back from alternate picking to directional picking, and that's what I've been doing ever since, and I haven't looked back. The point is, and you'll be surprised just how malleable your guitar technique is, and switching from alternate picking to directional isn't any different than changing any other habit in your playing you may have had for years or decades and making your technique better in the process. The reason I wanted to make this video is because it aggravates me how overcomplicated and convoluted guitar technique and practicing can become for no good reason. I like to keep things simple, and that's why I use directional picking, and I suggest you do the same. If you want to know other ways to simplify your practice and make the often overcomplicated topics like building speed, very simple, hit the link below, I'm going to show you a new way to build guitar speed without doing any slow practice at all. If you've got a lick you can already play pretty well at a slow speed, but you keep hitting your head against the same speed plateau every time you try to play faster, this will help you. I'll show you how to build your guitar speed without doing the old song and dance of starting slow and gradually building up speed in small increments, because let's face it, this way of practicing doesn't work anywhere near as well as people tell you that it does. And if you already know for yourself that that's true, check out the link below, enter your email address, I'll send you the masterclass for free. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.